Welcome, everybody. I wanted to talk about section 8.2 from the book, uh, Matthew Second Gardener. So this is on matchings and Hall's theorem. And then dually, also it's on vertex coverings and uh, Koenig's theorem, although we'll save that for the, the next video. All right, so let me tell you what a matching in, in a graph is. It's a collection of edges such that each vertex is incident to at most one edge. Uh, the following drawings are compliments of Kelly Emmerich and uh, Shannon Golden, who are in this class. Uh, together with Maria Gillespie and Rachel Priest, we're sort of writing an um, undergraduate combinatorics book. So on the left, I've drawn a picture of a matching, right? It's just a collection of edges. Here, the collection E prime of edges is drawn in orange and E prime is just that, that one edge. And this is a valid matching because no vertex is incident to more than one edge, right? Vertices are allowed to be incident to no edges, but I couldn't, for example, add this edge. That would no longer be a matching because this vertex um, right here at the top has been matched twice. So you could almost think of it as a, a matching as a, you know, maybe a better name for it would be a partial matching. Some, um, some vertices might be unmatched. So yeah, here's another example of a matching. These pairs of vertices are matched and here we have an unmatched vertex. A matching is maximum if it has the largest number of edges among all matchings. So it turns out that any matching here can have at most two edges for this complete graph on five vertices. So any matching with two edges is maximum in this example. But the word maximum means something different than the word maximal. So here I would say we have a maximal matching because you can't extend it. Right, any other edge you try to add is not a matching. This is furthermore, however, a maximum matching. It has the maximum number of edges. So not every matching can be extended to a maximum one, right? Here is a maximal matching that can't be extended to get a maximum one. So maximum matching, just uh, largest number of possible edges among all matchings. So let's do an example. Is there a matching of people to jobs that they would enjoy? So I have people, Alice, Barbara, Carly, Doug along the top. And on the bottom I have jobs. So maybe a quilter and a recording artist and a, um, studio musician, etc. And the edges are drawn between people and jobs that, uh, that that person would enjoy. So Alice would enjoy being a quilter or a uh, ventriloquist. Okay, but those are the only jobs that Alice would enjoy. So you can ask here, um, can we match everybody to a job in a suitable way where everybody gets employed um, in a happy manner? So we can just try this, you know, I'm just going to haphazardly draw in possible matchings and let's, let's see how, how well we do. So I, I start to match people up to jobs. And then currently, I don't think I can, oh, I could extend this like such, but currently I can't match person S or sorry, job S. Okay, so currently I have one person unmatched. Person F is unmatched and I have one job that's left unfilled. So you, you can argue here that it's impossible. Can anyone see a way to argue that? One way is um, look at these vertices that I've highlighted down at the bottom, 
So the jobs R, S, T, U, and W. Okay, let's consider their neighborhood. So their neighborhood is all the vertices that are connected to them by an edge. So the neighborhood is going to be I look at all the edges, incident, whoops, incident to R, S, T, U, and W, and then the neighborhood is going to be those vertices. Okay. So the neighborhood is vertex C, D, E, and G. The neighborhood of a collection of vertices is just all of the other vertices connected to some vertex in that set by an edge. You'll notice that RSTUV has size 5, whereas the neighborhood only has size 4, right? So now you can see that there's a problem. Here we found five jobs, but there's only four eligible people who can fill any of those five jobs. So certainly I can't fill all five of those jobs, right? And, and therefore, I'm not going to find a, a perfect matching from people to jobs. So the answer is no. No Samite can fill these five jobs with only four uh, possible people. So this is the easiest way to sort of show that you can't have a, a, a complete matching in this bipartite graph. It turns out that this condition is also sufficient. So if you can't find a counterexample like this, if you can't find a subset of jobs that can't be matched by people or vice versa, then it is possible to find a, a fully complete matching. That's going to be the statement of Hall's theorem. So we define matchings for any graph, but Hall's theorem is, is about matchings in bipartite graphs, such as the above graph with people and jobs. So a graph is bipartite if its vertices can be subdivided into two disjoint groups. So its vertex set can be just divided into two groups, x and y so that any edge goes from x to y. Okay, I don't have any edges between two vertices in x, and I don't have any edges between two vertices in y. So this graph on the left is bipartite. I could subdivide it into these two groups, and the only edges go between groups. There's no edge within two vertices of a single group. So. I'll call that set X on the left, and I'll call that set Y on the right. Often, when you have a bipartite graph, you'll redraw it, you know, where X is in a column and Y is in a column. And now you can clearly see all the edges go between X and Y. There's no edges between two vertices of X and no edges between two vertices of Y. So, this up here is an example bipartite graph as well. All right. Hall's theorem says let G be a bipartite graph where I can partition the vertices as X and Y. Then G has a matching covering X. Let's say X is down here and Y is up here. So X is the jobs and Y is the people. G has a, a matching covering X, meaning, you know, um, every, every vertex in X is um, adjacent to some edge in the matching. If and only if you can't find, you know, an obvious reason to, for this matching to not exist, right? So, before I prove that I can't have a matching in which every job is included in that matching, 
because I found this collection X prime that had size five, even though its neighborhood had size four, okay? But Hall's theorem says that if you can't find a, an obvious reason for no matching to exist, then you can find a complete matching containing every vertex in X. All right, so the forward direction is clear because, um, you know, if you have a matching, then you certainly can't have an obvious reason for that matching to not exist. The backwards direction is not as clear, right? The direction going this way requires proof, certainly, going from right to left. You know, you might have a picture Um, like this, where, you know, like, um, let's say this is X and this is Y. Um, okay. And then let X prime just be this single vertex. Okay. So in that example, the size of X prime is one and the size of the neighborhood is four. Okay, so I haven't found a, a counterexample, right? You know, furthermore, if I, if I let uh, X prime be all of X, then the size of X prime is three and the size of its neighborhood is still four. I still haven't found a counterexample, right? But I can find a counterexample if I choose a different collection, X prime. So what if I let X prime just be V, right? Then the size of X prime is one, whereas the size of its neighborhood is, is zero. So this would be a problem. All right, so in any case, when, when no matching exists, like in, in this blue graph, no matching exists, it's not obvious what set X prime you want to look at to, to break the right-hand side. So it's not obvious how to go from the right to left, but we'll derive the reverse direction using uh, Koenig's theorem in the next video. Koenig's theorem will then prove using the duality of linear programming. Questions? Thanks so much.